everyone, and this is Battle Phoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a funky game called Silhouette Barrage, and it's for the PlayStation 1 and it was released in the year 2000, and it was developed by Treasure and published by Working Design. Okay, so you got a company like Treasure who usually likes to make games that are very off the wall, and then Working Design is the company publishing it. They're the kind of companies that whenever they localize a game over here, they usually like to go the extra mile, just for an example, like they always used to use holographic covers, kind of like what they use in trading cards for the more like holographic stuff, you know, like stuff from like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Magic the Gathering. Really cool shit. So with that being said, this should at least be somewhat interesting, shouldn't it? But before I talk about the game, there is one thing I would like to mention is that this is actually not the original version. So the original version was for the Sega Saturn, but it was only released in Japan. So after when they remade it for the PlayStation 1, that one actually got a release date over here. So with that being said, it's an action running gun game, and it does take some elements from other games, and I'll go into it as I go. So for now, let's talk about the story first. So you play as the main character, Shina Nira Shina. Now that is a pretty damn weird name, but of course, it doesn't come close to anywhere near Goat Bone. And she has a self-proclaimed title, and that is The Messenger of Justice. And the reason why she has a title such as this is because she has to set the world making sure it's all balanced. And I'm sure you can take a guess what happens here is that something fucks up. And that happens to be a computer system called Ebdo or Ebdo. And it turned the entire world into a post-apocalyptic world. And weirdly enough, everything is all bright and colorful. And didn't they say something about in the game Baroque about it would be really weird if they made a post-apocalyptic world where everything was all like bright, colorful, and happy, and rainbows? Well, I think this is the only game I can think of that has something like that. So anyways, the entire world is all screwed up, and now there's only two factions that are lively. And that is the Silhouettes and the Mirage. And they're both at war with each other, and the thing is, is that they're both kind of like a whole yin and yang thing, where pretty much one cannot exist without the other. So because they're at war with each other, that means that, well, things would get really screwed up if one of them actually end up taking over. So the leader of the Mirage is named Hal, and the leader of the Silhouettes is named Magido. Not only do they look very similar to each other, but they also look like a much younger version of Igor from the Persona games. So Shaina has to put an end to this by destroying Ido, because she has both the Silhouette and the Mirage, which is why she keeps everything in balance. And then there is a rival character named Zohar, who also has the exact same powers. I don't think that's the basis of what you need to know about the story, and well, it's actually somewhat interesting. Now it is a very strange story, but it's at least very different. Even though I think that the story in this kind of game isn't the main focus, it's at least there. But there's nothing much I can really complain about it, so really, I think the story is alright. And now, let's take a look at the gameplay, and let me tell you, there's a lot of weird mechanics in this game. So, it's a running gun type game, so you know how that goes, you know, you just run, you jump, and you shoot. And because Shina has two halves, being one being blue and the other being red, one of them being for her silhouette and the other one being for Mirage, Depending on the way that you're facing, you have to kill certain enemies while you're facing that direction. So just for an example, if there's an enemy that is from the Mirage, you have to make sure that your blue side is showing facing towards you. But you can switch sides just by pressing the triangle button, so it would be opposite way around. Or of course, you can also like pick people up and you can throw them. You can dodge, you can double jump, you can even like glide for a bit. And there's a special attack that you can do that attacks everything, but it takes up some magic. And when you run in this game, you can actually go up walls sometimes, so it almost feels like a Sonic the Hedgehog game in a way. So if the gameplay aspects remind me of anything, it kinda takes elements from Sonic and Gunstar Heroes. But with the addition of a new mechanic where you have to be facing the right direction to kill your enemy's weakness. It's a very strange mechanic to be sure, but it does take some time to get used to. And you can get a reflector that reflects certain objects as you would suspect. And then there's a bunny guy with a stand where you can buy stuff from, but you can only buy upgrades. And then there are bosses throughout the level, sometimes there's more than one. For a running gun game, this game seems to be a bit more on the complicated side, but it's not like the most complicated thing ever, but it does take some time to get used to. But it is most definitely unique, and I gotta give them some credit for that. So, let's move on to the controls. 
And I have to say, they are generally pretty good. So running, jumping, shooting, grabbing, and all that type of stuff is really easy to figure out. And then using your special attack is using R2 and L2 together, which is also pretty easy. Now when you want to change sides, all you gotta do is press the triangle button, but the only thing about it is that it takes up quite a long time just to change because it has to do this really cool looking animation, and well, it does look really cool, I just wish that it could have just been gone faster. But other than that, everything else is pretty good. So I don't have any complaints about that except for that one thing that I mentioned, but I guess that's not really had to do with the controls, it just more has to do with the fact that it just takes a little while to change. Now something I would like to mention right now, because I kind of forgot to mention it before, and that happens to be that there's a lot of cutscenes during the middle of gameplay. Now I know I said something about the story in this game isn't the reason why you play it, but I do feel that these cutscenes could have been on a little bit shorter, but either way though, at least you can skip most of them, and the text goes by pretty fast. Now it doesn't bother me too much, but I know some people might have a problem with that. Now as for the game's graphics, I find they look really, really good. I mean, everything looks bright and colorful and very appealing looking. And there's a lot of detail within the backgrounds. And considering that the game runs pretty smooth, it's actually really interesting how it all worked out. So this is a really nice looking game that happens to be 2D on a PlayStation 1. Because I have heard that Sony of America around the time when the PlayStation 1 was new, they really wanted to push forward to making more three-dimensional games more than 2D games. Which personally, I find that to be really stupid. I mean, honestly, I don't mind playing a game in 3D and I don't mind playing one that's 2D. But I guess, you know, they really wanted to appeal to, you know, graphic whores and their polygon tits. But anyway, something else I'd like to mention is that I find the art style is actually pretty interesting. It kind of has the mix between Mega Man Legends and Disgaea. So I do kind of like the art style, the character characters, the anime cutscenes, it's all good. But something else I like to say, but not graphically, but more has to do with the layouts of the levels. Now sometimes they are pretty good, but other times it can feel a little bit claustrophobic. Because it's really hard to actually get a good angle to hit your enemies with their weakness without having to like wait a long time by pressing triangle. And I also find it to be really hard to actually get through some of the areas without getting hit. So overall, the graphics are really good, but the level design is not bad, but it could have been a bit better. Now as for the game's music, I actually find it to be really good. Now it may not be the most memorable thing ever, but I actually do find it to be really good and interesting sounding. I don't know how to describe the feel of the songs, but I just really like them a lot, so personally, I really dig the music in this game. But if it does remind me of another OST, it sort of does remind me of the music from Sonic CD. But even then, I don't even know if that would be accurate, but that's just the feeling that I get from it. But either way, you really can't go wrong with the music. Now as for the game's voice acting, man are they bad. Now as bad as they are, I definitely don't think it's the worst thing I ever heard, but it definitely does get really annoying, especially the fact that you always hear the same damn things over and over again. Especially when you hear Shira say, Reflector! 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 And then there's that boss that has like a lizard crawling on the wall. Oh my god, that guy irritated the shit out of me, I actually had to mute my fucking TV. Same thing with that fish bitch that you fight in the city. Yeah, I know, that doesn't make any fucking sense, but seriously though, that happened. Now, I don't know who played the voices here, but either way though, it still doesn't change the fact that they're just not very good at all. I mean, hell, even one of these people could have been one of my favorite voice actors, and still, I still think they'd be pretty bad. So for that reason, it's probably the weakest part, even if it is just some little thing that doesn't break the game at all. Now, if you want to buy this game, this game is usually going to cost around $45 to $60. Now, when I got this game, I actually ended up getting it for $40, and it was sealed. I just had to get it, mainly because, you know, it's not very often that you see a sealed game of a working design game for $40. So I found that to be a really good deal, and also the game did interest me, which is probably the most important thing of why I wanted to get it, and of course, I opened it because, you know, I actually want to play my damn games. But if you do want to get an import copy of either the Sega Saturn version or the PS1 version, it's really hard to tell what the that price point is because there's a lot of them that are either ranging from like $20, some of them for $30, sometimes for $40, and then there's even some that are even going up to $80, so I really have no idea what the hell the actual price point is because it's kind of all over the place. Also, this game is pretty hard to come by, I mean I've only seen it twice, and the first time I've seen it was when I got it for that much, and I found that $40 for this kind of game isn't that bad, but if you can get it for way less than that, then hey, by all means, go for it. And one other thing I'd like to mention is that this game actually came with a Lunar 2 demo. 
But it doesn't give it to you on a separate disc, it's actually on the same disc as this, but you have to access it in a really weird way. So what you have to do is that you have to hold L1 as the PlayStation 1 is turning on, and then it'll take you to the demo right away. Oh, and by the way, when I mean a demo, I mean it's just like a video clip, it's not actual gameplay, which is unfortunate, but it's still a pretty cool bonus to have. And as weird as it may sound to get to it, it does kind of remind me of the GameCube menu as soon as you turn it on while holding the Z button, it does a, does a special effect. So for now, if I were to rate this game, I'd have to give it a 7 out of 10. I found this game to be very unique, and it is pretty fun, but it can actually be very challenging. Now a lot of the times it is challenging, mostly because, you know, it actually is a hard game. But sometimes it can feel a little bit cheap because of the level design I find. But other than that, this game is actually pretty fun for what it is. And like I said before, that whole mechanic with the Mirage thing can actually be pretty tough to get into at times. I mean, when I first played this game, I was just like all over the place. But after playing it for a longer time and actually getting used to it, I found it to be pretty amusing. Although this is no Gunstar Heroes by any means. But it did try to do something different, and I liked it. I mean, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. Because apparently this game actually got like a 4 out of 10 on some gaming sites. And well, as you can tell, I have to disagree with that. I do think it is a pretty good game, but it's definitely not the best of a genre. But it definitely is interesting because of how different it was trying to be. And that's why I gotta give them a little bit of credit for that, mostly because they tried to do something different and ended up being pretty decent. Sure, some things could have been better, but for what it is, I actually like it. But of course, it's not for everyone. So that's all I have to say about the good old funky silhouette mirage, and well, yeah, the game is pretty damn funky. So with that being said, thanks for watching and commenting, and have yourself a good day.